Hey guys, happy weekend. Gonna do a video on a company I just learned about. I thought I would do the research and make a video on it. Maybe you've heard of it and you can share some insights with me. Maybe you haven't and we can look at it together. So this is Grab, stock ticker G-R-A-B. Apparently it's a bunch of different business lines and I want to go over the analyst projections, build a little bit of a model, a 10 year model. What could this thing do in 10 years? Should I even bother with it? Um, is it a growth story or is it going to be a, another startup SPAC that burns out? That's what I'm trying to find out. I already have my screenshots set up. And first, quick look at the website. This is Grab, and they seem to have like delivery, payment services, some kind of a, a mart, find everything you need. Uh, I guess they do rides, insurance, feels like a jack of all trades, which is good and bad. I was thinking it was more of like an Amazon type thing. I don't think that's what it is. Let's click on Mart real quick. So it's delivery of groceries. It's hopefully it's not like just an Uber. It seems like delivery, a convenience type app. Then if I go over to Seeking Alpha, Grab Holdings Limited provides super apps that allow access to mobility, delivery, financial services, and enterprise offerings through its mobile application in Cambodia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar, and the Philippines, and Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. The company is headquartered in Singapore. Okay. Well, while we're here, um, I wanted to show their earnings i already have the screenshots on the on the page but if you look they're losing money they lost money last year that they're losing money this year and it's gonna slow down i believe 25 is like seven cents and then it goes it starts to go positive uh sales growth uh revenue huge huge percentages this is why we're even interested is this thing gonna grow for a decade it has to grow for a long time otherwise it's not worth it uh, sales low 1 billion to mid 2 billion so doubled in two years that's starting to look right the other thing that i thought was interesting is they already have a lot of cash they have uh six and a half billion dollars and uh that makes them more attractive because they they could be already funded if they already have the money they need till they start making profits. That's that's more interesting than some of these other junkier companies that I've been looking at. Um, if if they need access to capital, interest rates are going up. It's going to be harder to get that capital. But uh, it looks like Grab already has a good chunk. Their enterprise value is lower than the market cap because this company is cheaper when you factor out the cash. Very interesting. 40% growth. All right. So I have all the bits and pieces real quick. I just want to look at some of the comments. Upside potential. Let's see a negative sell on non-existent profitability. I hear you, brother. And then we look at uh, the upside. Highly speculative, but moving in the right direction. All right. So we jump back to the chart. Let's get this out of the way. And then I took a screenshot. I don't know how big it'll look, but this is the 10 year outlook for sales. So last year, 2022, uh, 1.3 billion in sales. This year they're expecting 1.9 billion. So we fast forward to what, to make believe land. Uh, don't get me wrong. This is all make believe, but we need something to go off of. This is why I pay for the premium on Seeking Alpha. 
2030 and 2031 looking into the crystal ball they're saying they could be ha they could be uh, having six billion in, in sales now also interesting uh, for 2023 they're expecting 45 percent growth if we just use the 45 percent growth to infinity wouldn't that be a huge mountain of potential gains but that's not reality so they slow down just like every other growth company as they as they go from startup to uh, small growing to mature, the growth rate comes down. So that affects the growth rate. I'm going to use like a 20% assumption just to flatten it out. I, I do expect a slowdown and then a speed up because we could be going into some kind of recession. All right. So I will have to factor, hey, if a company is worth is, is selling six billion, what are the possibilities for valuation? That's that's what I want to do, and I already have some text on that. Um, should I pull that up? Yeah, I have it right here. So if this company in the future is going to be six billion in sales, I already know more or less what other companies go for. You know, if the company's in trouble, one-time sales. If the company is doing really well, four to ten times sales. So then I, I slap some some multiples on that two four eight, right? Okay, it's trading at three dollars, eight dollars upside. That tells me it's already a little expensive. That's fine. Um, but if we see the stock cheaper, now we know. Hey, look. Uh, if it's one to two dollars and it's going to eight, now it's interesting, right? All right, let's do the same thing for uh, earnings. The analyst will give give us some assumptions on earnings. Right now, they're negative thirty six. For later in the year, they'll be negative twenty five. This is a money loser. It's still trying to break even. Uh, 2024, 16 cents, 2025, 7 cents. And then they are no longer a loser in 2026. We fast forward to 2031, 46 cents. What would we pay for a company earning 46 cents? That's a good, good question. So that's the next one. I'm going to bring that down here. 2031, if we fast forward into the future, the market multiple on average is 15. So a company earning 46 cents would be should be worth at least 15 PE. So that's a two dollar and 30 cents. Company is more expensive than that. Uh, not good. If we do, uh, uh, we factor in some kind of a growth rate. It should be worth at least ten dollars. Uh, that's probably a more reasonable price because it's it's a it's probably going to be a growth company and then an expensive growth company would be two times the growth rate multiplied to the earnings so that would be a $20 stock so now those are the assumptions that i used to you know draw some lines company is worth $3 a share they may dilute a little bit more hopefully they don't Let's assume the same share count, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, if you buy the company now, close your eyes for 10 years, what's it going to be worth? Well, it might be worth anything between $8 and $20. So that's, those are my assumptions for what the future looks like for this company. Let me clear everything. And let's look at the tangible book because I want to make sure we're clear. So this company, it's a $3 stock. Interestingly, tangible book was just under $2. So if the, if the stock price was at $1.50, I'd be comfortable hands down putting this trade on because I know they've got a balance sheet with hard assets of $1.50. So that's another interesting number to keep in mind. As long as they're not bleeding too much money every quarter, <clears throat> we can use tangible value. 
This is their cash flow. They had a big, uh, bad December. Uh, is that right? Yeah, December negative three billion. Probably some big expenses in there. Uh, March and June not too bad, and September twenty two starting to get a little better. If uh, if this starts going up towards a positive, hey, we're in good shape. Anything else worth looking at? Obviously, PE is negative. Price to sales, a little high. So anytime you see above 10 times sales, that's a little expensive. That implies a lot of growth being priced in. If, if this is four, closer to four times sales, more, more attractive. Um, in 2008, in the recession, a lot of stocks were trading one to uh, below one time sales and, and the better companies were trading two time sales right now almost every company is trading two three time sales and the better companies are five six seven eight so the market is expensive right now hopefully we see some kind of a sale and i drew some lines now that i have all my data points it makes it easy and let me see so I already wrote, if I see this in the $2 area, that would be attractive for a 10-year trade. Now that I've done some notes, as long as those assumptions play out, no surprises to the negative. Uh, currently, it's a $12 billion market cap with a tangible book at $1.50. If I see this in the $2 area, I'm going to start putting on some trades and then see what happens. Now. It's going to be risky for a few years, so it's not a trade I can put on in the big size. But it's something that I would add if if my price comes home. Uh, another thing that's interesting is it's below five dollars. Institutions, probably uh, some institutions in their mandate can't even hold this thing because it's it's considered a penny stock. Three dollars and forty eight cents. That's considered a penny stock. Uh, back in the day. When I was a young, dumb stockbroker, hey, if it was $5, you couldn't even talk about it. Couldn't recommend it. So something worth noting about noting. Uh, it might be interesting on that alone. But again, this is a money loser. It's losing money. If they run out of money and they keep losing money, that will be bad. Another thing is currency. Uh, if, if the dollar strengthens, the cash flows from this company won't be as good. If the dollar weekends, then this this is a non-dollar earner, and it, it would be um, like a hedge. It, it, it would get a, a bump on that note. So I think that's all I want to put in to this video. Maybe a lot of information, maybe not. Maybe uh, Maybe you enjoyed it, maybe you didn't, but please let me know. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Cheers.